Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to animate elements continually using an infinite animation count. As you can see over here, we've got a bouncing ball. Uh, the previous challenge covered how to use some of the animation properties and the keyframes rule. Another animation property in animation iteration count, which allows you to control how many times you would like to loop through the animation. Here's an example. The animation iteration count is equal to three. In this case, animation uh, will stop after running three times. But it's possible to make an animation iteration, uh, an animation run continuously by setting that value to infinite. To keep the ball bouncing on the right, so you've noticed that this, as I've been talking, this ball has stopped bouncing. And so what we're working on here is trying to make it so that the ball bounces infinitely. So to keep the ball bouncing on the right on a continuous leap, change the animation <clears throat> animation iteration count property to infinite. And so um, we look here. Let's see. We've got the ID of ball, so this is the visual part. If we take this away, the ball disappears. Uh, we can put it back in. We could actually add uh, two balls by duplicating it, and then we have two balls. And so um, that gives you an idea for how this works. Now we have three balls. Um, so to um, set the property to infinite, we want to come up here. So the balls have the ID of ball, uh, which is uh, tied to this, the pound sign, and then the animate animation iteration count is currently set to three. But if we set it to infinite, um, it, it'll reset. And now we've just created a screen where there's going to be infinite bouncing balls. This will last for as long as the power is running on your computer. Uh, we've run the tests. And this gives you an idea. OK, so they passed, but I want to like provide a little bit more background on this. Um, so the keyframe count is what's it doing? It's saying at 0%, uh, it's up here at 0 pixels. The width is uh, 130, so that's the width of the ball. The height is 70, that's the height of the ball. And then at 100%, it goes back to top. And then, so as you can see, it changes the width to be, um, let's see, does the width stay the same? At 130, the width is at here at 100. So as it gets down here lower, it stretches out to 130, and the height shrinks from 70 to 100. And so let's say we wanted the height to shrink. Let's make it so that the ball bouncing is more intense. Let's make it so it shrinks to 20. We can see now it just has this really compact look as it shrinks. And then what happens if we made the width so that it was like 190? That would make it so it gets really fat as it gets down. It's like heavier bounces. And so that's what's happening here as from 0 to 50 to 100. It's slowly getting more like that. Uh, the duration's two seconds. So if we made this four, it would bounce much slower. Um, we'll leave that at one for now. Um, the background, it's a linear gradient, so we could change this from, uh, we can make it red to green to make it really intense. So that's just the gradient. You see red to green right there? The background, linear gradient, 35 degree, meaning that's the, the gradient. I'm going to set those back. Positions relative, uh, that's a little over the scope of this. Margin, uh, 50 pixels auto. That makes it so that it's in the center. And then this just sets the original height of it, so that gives it that round shape. So say we wanted to make this 50, we'd have a bouncing oval. Um, yeah. So I hope that that, uh, I'm just trying to provide some in more insights into what exactly is going on with this code. This is just raw HTML and CSS. So this is very, very useful stuff, even once you get to be a more proficient programmer, knowing this sort of uh, keyframe stuff is uh, low level information or low level programming that's really useful. So obviously the tests still run. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.